Hey guys, it's Rachel. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to I am so excited because I feel like it's been a long waited overdue time for a Q&A. So I decided I was going to ask you guys on my community page what you guys would like to know. And so I also wanted to do a video where I try a couple new Dunkin' items. I used to do Dunkin' videos all the time. I don't know why I really stopped. I was gonna do this video a lot sooner. However, I got sick. I got the stomach bug that is going around and trust me, this Dunkin' that I got would not have like been even like worth getting at that point because I just, I, I was not, I was not well, but we're so much better now. We've recouped. I've had time with my best friend this past weekend. So it is time to go ahead and try these. I'm gonna go ahead and try these first and then we're gonna jump into the Q&A. Um, so what I got is they have so many like new churro items. They have like a churro signature latte. They have like um, cinnamon vanilla iced coffee, which sounds really good. But the most intriguing was their banana chocolate bread. Listen, I am an avid lover of banana bread. It's one of my favorite sweet treats. It probably is my favorite sweet treat. So I decided to get that and then I got the churro iced coffee. Um, I got it with two pumps of churro syrup and then I got cream. That's usually how I get my iced coffee. So I decided instead of getting like a latte or something like that, I wanted to get it how I usually would get it. So. Wait, I love that. And let me tell you why I love that. So I love this because it's not too, I can't tell where it's dripping from. Um, it's not too sweet. Like it's just, it adds flavor, but it's not, it's not sickening sweet, which is why I love their caramel because their caramel is still like sweet. But if I put it in my iced coffee, it's not like, oh my gosh, overpowering sweet. And with the cream. Wait, I love this. I will definitely get the churro syrup again. That is so lovely. Like, that's the best way I can describe it. It's just like lovely. Like a nice, like refreshing cup of coffee. But it's not too much, if that makes sense, in the sweet department. That, it looks like milk. Um... However, I promise it's coffee. Um, okay. And then we're gonna go ahead and try the chocolate chip banana bread. Now, I do watch Steph Pappas, and she, sa she said it was so good, so I'm so excited. I watched her video this morning while I was getting ready. Okay, cheers. Oh my God, if you love banana bread, run, don't walk. That is their best sweet thing on the menu. Listen, um, oh my God. This is gonna be gone so fast. I love this so much. That is a solid 13 out of 10. And so is that churro iced coffee. So I follow this creator on um, Instagram. His name is Marky Devo. And he always has the inside scoop about new menu items that come out for every single like fast food place and so I always pay attention to the Dunkin one in particular and when I saw chocolate chip banana bread let me tell you I was counting down the days until it got released and then of course the day it got released Rachel was in bed sick anyway so now we're gonna jump into some questions I adore answering questions like one thing about me is I love answering questions so I'm so glad that you guys responded and asked me some good ones so let's go what genre do you think the tortured poets department will be I think it's gonna be pop but I don't think it's gonna be the same kind of pop that 
Midnight's was, Reputation was, 1989 was, because every single time Taylor drops a pop album, it sounds different. Like, I can distinguish a song off Midnight's, 1989, Reputation, Lover, anything, not only because I can recognize a Taylor Swift song in .01 seconds, but the, the, the feel of it is just so different. So, I definitely think it's still gonna be pop. If you could listen to one Taylor Swift album or one album for the rest of your life, what would it be? I think that it would probably either be Fearless, Taylor's version, or Midnight's. And I say Fearless because that is just like the ultimate nostalgic Taylor feel. And that album brings me home every single time. That was the album that kicked off my love for Taylor um, because I was fixated on Love Story. I say that, but then Debut was like the one that like made me feel understood for the first time by music. So like I, I would honestly still say Fearless, Taylor's version. Um, if you could add any song to the Eras Tour set list, what would you choose to add? You're on your own, kid. I think You're on Your Own Kid <laughs> needs to be added to the set list. I think this because Taylor loves singing it. She's done it multiple times for a surprise song. It means, like, it is the defining song of the Eras Tour. Make the friendship bracelets. Like, generations of people are trading friendship bracelets. Um, I know even when Emma came this past weekend, we sat down, spread all our beads out on my table, and we sat, we watched Folklore Long Pond Studio Sessions, and we made friendship bracelets. It's become such a fun hobby and pastime, and it's so fun to create different little bracelets, like, I have a whole stash in my room. I have some from tour that I traded. I have ones that I've made, ones Emma's made me, ones that I've traded, like I said last year. Like I am just, I think the Make the Friendship Bracelets line will like forever be iconic. So I would definitely say you're on your own, kid. <clears throat> and I may change my answer once we have Tortured Poets. Okay. Um, what is your favorite vinyl LP? My favorite vinyl that I have definitely would be the 1989 Record Store Day, just because like that album means so much to me in general. Um, that's the one that made all my dreams come true and to have the Record Store Day one of that um, is just very special. How do you think Taylor will add the Tortured Poets into the Eras Tour? I think it's definitely going to be a surprise song, a clock ordeal. I think it's going to be a surprise song, a clock ordeal. Um, I don't think that she's going to add it to the set list. I could be wrong because there is a gap between Singapore and her next date, which would be in Paris. So I don't know, but I think she's going to stick to the same set list throughout the whole tour and then she'll do surprise songs for it. Do you think she'll add more dates to the tour? I have wondered this. She actually just added another date in Spain, like a second date in Spain. So I'm not sure if she's going to trickle more in. I'm not sure, but I feel like it might be probable. But at some point, the tour has to end. And her, this person's next question, Tess. Hey, Tess. Um, will her movie project include any of her music? I would think yes, and it might even be based on one of her songs. Let me tell you, if there was a movie, if Taylor's directed film was based on The Last Great American Dynasty, I think that would be the best thing to ever, ever exist. But my point in tying those two questions together is, I definitely think in 2025, Taylor's going to focus on her directed movie. So at some point, the Eras Tour unfortunately has to come to an end. What style do you think the Torture Poets Department will be? And do you think it will have songs about Travis? Is it a breakup album? I definitely think that this album is what she needs to say. As she said, it was a lifeline for her and she wrote it over the past two years. 
a lot has happened over the past two years and her relationship of six years ended. I don't think that this is going to have any songs about Travis. I would personally be shocked if it did um, because Taylor has a lot to get off her chest and the song titles are just telling me that these are not about Travis. However, Taylor Swift likes to surprise us, but I really don't think it's going to be about Travis. I think it's going to be about her past relationship and I think it's going to be the ultimate story that we have yet to be told. And for the style, I was actually just telling Emma this the other day. So Taylor's been wearing like a lot of corsets lately. Um, I think it'll be like a lot of like black and white schemes, but we haven't had a lot of pictures of Taylor other than the back and front cover for promotional aspects of it yet. So I can't tell what it's going to be because I was like, oh my gosh, like I need to start thinking about like my release day outfit, but I can't figure out the vibe yet except like white um maybe like a white sheer long sleeve and like black jeans or something like that I can't quite tell I think it's going to be very simplistic Just on the covers it's very simplistic and I think the music is going to speak volumes for this album as regards like to not drawing attention too much to the covers I think it's going to be just like very clear cut like here's the simplistic nature of the cover because I want I want you to dive in deeper to the music, if that makes sense. So, in conclusion, I can't tell yet. I cannot tell yet. What is it like for you as a longtime Swifty experiencing a large influx of new Swifties over the years? This is a question that I'm going to... I'm going to tread lightly on. Okay, here's what I have to say. I am so incredibly happy that Taylor is loved. I think it is the most insane thing and the most heartwarming thing when I see little tiny fans and little Swifties. I was on my hands and knees with little Swifties at tour trading bracelets. When I tell you I had tears in my eyes and I'm not being dramatic, like I think that was the purest thing. A whole new generation of fans is loving her and getting to support her and grow up with her music, which is insane. I, I was that little girl that I handed the bracelet to it to her. I remember when I went to the Speak Now World Tour, I was 12 years old, and I remember so clearly a girl behind me, she was a little bit older than me, but we were so excited. Um, she was screaming every time a cover girl ad would come on, even before the openers would come on. And our parents were like, it's just it's just the, uh, the previews, and we're like, we don't care, it's Taylor. I think that bonding experience and the generations is something that is so wholesome to me. What I don't appreciate personally is people that bullied me, people that have bullied my friends, jumping on the bandwagon, and it's not like in a, oh, I get it now kind of way. It's like the, it's become the trend, if you will. It's not like, if somebody sincerely is like, oh my God, like I get it now. Um, I get why you love Taylor so much. All the respect in the world. But if somebody is going to be like a just there to say they went to the Eras Tour to say, oh, I saw Taylor Swift, that's when I have a problem. Like, there are so many fans that love her and have loved her for years. And I'm so, so, so cheering them on to like see the Eras Tour. And then when you see somebody go that like hasn't been nice to you or supportive or even kind um that that stings a little bit as a fan because it's like okay but when you were talking trash like I was here I've never left Taylor's side um but you were being rude to somebody and that's not what Taylor supports Taylor would never support bullying. Like, those songs that she wrote about bullying, I related to you. So why are you here in my happy spot, if that makes sense? Um, but like I said, if somebody's like a new fan and truly like, um, just has never like gotten into her like that, and they're like, oh my god, like this is like so groundbreaking for me, like I love her music, I love her storytelling, I just like always listen to the radio hits, like that I have respect for. 
like I said, the things that I don't have respect for are the people who are just pretty much there to say they went and then being rude to other fans. Um, that's, that's what I don't appreciate, but the little, the little fans have my complete heart. Like, that is the whole, most wholesome thing ever and will forever make me cry. Okay. As we inch closer to the tortured poets department, what do you think will devastate you the most? I think down bad. I think Clara Bow, and definitely I can do it with a broken heart. Those are my top three that I think were gonna devastate me the most. Um, do you think there will be any music videos for the tortured poets department? I think yes, and I think honestly, I think Fresh Out of the Slammer might be a music video. That just sounds like a pop sensation waiting to happen. What track do you claim on the Torture Poets Department? I'm claiming the track title, And So Long London. <laughs> I think I'm gonna claim Clarabo, and I also think I'm gonna go ahead and claim, for some reason, I can fix him, no I really can, and Fresh Out the Slammer is just screaming at me to claim. So there you go. Um, what merch piece have you spent the most money on? I've been so lucky to get so much of mine for face value. Um, what would it, it would probably be my signed Taylor nine square lithograph, but that was from my dad for, from Christmas. Like, so I can't take credit for that. Um, like I said, I get all mine for face value, um, from like, shops and um when she's dropped it on her merch store like I um I'm trying to think I'd say maybe my vinyl do you think we're gonna get an Eras tour live album I think yes I think eventually yes I think when the Eras tour is over Taylor's gonna hand it over to us um what is your favorite Taylor album besides Midnight's uh it changes all the time even like, I can't even say like, oh, this one's my favorite, this one's my favorite, because they all mean so much to me, but <laughs> Fearless will always have such a special, special place in my heart. Thoughts on Taylor's merch site and merch in general? I personally am such a merch girly. I have been collecting Taylor merch ever since the Speak Now era. Um, so I can sit here and say, oh, I don't love the way her store handles things, or I don't love the way that they handle their customer service. However, it's not like I'm going to stop buying from them. Like the thing is like, I can sit here and say, oh, you know, what? I'm going to stop. Be serious. Be so for real, Rachel. Like you're, you're not, um, let's just be honest. Don't even throw that out there because you're not. Um, could they be better? Yes. Have they not dropped anything since the Christmas debacle? Yes. The holiday situation, people got refunds um, for stuff that was promised to be shipped by 1215. I got all my refunds. I even got refunds for my stuff that was supposed to ship from the 1989 drops in October that were supposed to ship by 1215. So I personally got everything situated. Um, some of my friends even got store credits. I did not get any store credits. Um, but I think they handled that situation very well. I've noticed even when I asked for shipping about the Tortured Poets Department um, exclusive collector's edition CDs and vinyls, my total was over $50. So I thought I was supposed to get free shipping. Um, and so I asked for them to refund my shipping and they're like, Hey, like just to let you know, like here's our guidelines. Like it doesn't apply to music. They were so kind and so, so fingers crossed for the tortured poets department era. It will definitely be better. I think that the holiday drop was definitely a big eye opener for them. Okay. Most underrated eras to her outfit. I feel like we don't talk about the Midnight's anti-hero dress enough. I feel like we don't. It's, it's iconic. How has it been living in your first apartment? It has been so, so much fun. I 
I have always wanted my own apartment and getting to have this experience, getting to actually like see that dream come true for myself has been so fulfilling and so special to decorate the way I want, eat dinner like when I want, um, be on my own schedule. If I want to lay on my couch, I'm going to lay on my couch. Like it's just very freeing and I'm on my own schedule and I go home to my sweet little cat and, um, I just feel very free in life right now and I think that that is something that I have been trying to achieve and I knew that was something out of college that I definitely wanted so I am very very happy you know like I had Emma over this past weekend and Bobby's coming in March and it's just like good times is what I can say. What era had the best merch? <gasps> Ooh, I love this question. I really loved Speak Now's merch, like the original Speak Now and also Reputation. Like you can't go wrong with that answer either. Do you have a least favorite Taylor Swift song? I don't have a least favorite at all. However, I can say that one I don't listen to, like my, if you guys want to know my least listen to, it would definitely be Carolina. That is the only song that like I personally I, I have not listened to as much as her others. However, her her range in that song sounds so gorgeous. Like, I love her lower register so much. So, if the Chiefs had not won the Super Bowl, would you have still considered it a memory? A substantial memory? abso freaking -lutely. Yes to the nth degree. And this is so funny. So... I look over in my passenger seat right now. I went and got my dad the other night for ice cream and I, he got in the car with this. Go Taylor's boyfriend. He was like, I got this for you. It didn't come in time for Super Bowl, but I got this for you and I thought it was so cute and funny. So. Yes, the Super Bowl was truly, like my dad and I were even texting like once I got home, he was like, you have no idea what that meant to me. And like, shit, I'll cry. Like that is just so incredibly sweet and wholesome and we got snacks, we sat, we cheered. I asked him questions, like we just had so much fun that night. And um, he was rooting for the 49ers because, he it's not because he didn't like the Chiefs or anything like that. He was cheering on the 49ers because he didn't want the Chiefs to tie the Patriots record and um, he's always been a huge Patriots fan. He grew up in Connecticut. So um, that is why he was cheering for the 49ers because he didn't want the Chiefs to tie their record. Um, so anyways, we had a blast. So incredibly special to me to have that experience with him. And like I said, I've watched the Super Bowls before but I've never been into the game like that before. So yes, it was sincerely so much fun and it was equally as special for him as it was me. My camera is about to die. Guess what? We're gonna have to go home and charge her and I will definitely continue more of this Q&A later. I'm back to answer some more questions. I'm just gonna hope that my camera has had ample time to get a little bit of charge so I can finish this. Um, it should. I usually just charge my camera overnight, so I don't really know like how long it takes. Anyways, anyways, I came home, put my stuff away. Then I also went and took a very nice walk. I went and got my mail. Like we've, we've had time, right? I also proofed my video of Emma and I's <laughs> tortured poets predictions. Um, just to make sure it was good for you guys and that's gonna go up so I've done that and taken a walk so we're gonna just we're just gonna assume that I've definitely had enough time and allowed enough time to let my camera charge a little bit so we're gonna hop back into your questions and I'm just gonna stand here in my kitchen so somebody asked me what youtubers I like to watch and for me personally I would choose watching YouTube over any streaming platform, any TV show, like I love to sit and watch my favorite YouTubers. So let me tell you about them. I watch Jules and Saad every single time they upload. It does not matter what it is. It could be a vlog. It could be a challenge. 
I adore Jules and Saad. I love how real they keep their content, how fun they keep their content, how informed they keep their audience. I love Jules and Saad. I respect them so much. I've watched them for years. I've watched a lot of like couples channels over the years and I can tell you I hardly watch any anymore but Jules and Saad, they, they really are the best. So I watch Jules and Saad like every single time they upload I have their notifications on my phone so um, I get alerted when they upload and I immediately hit watch later like immediately also another one of my favorites Tara's world Tara's world I absolutely adore her vlogs I love when she makes vlogs longer because then I don't have to search for something else to like look for while I eat or just like want to relax like I don't have to keep fishing for the remote I don't know. I love that she does long vlogs and she just talks to us and it's, yeah. Yeah, I love Tara. Okay, and then I also love Emily Enchanted. She does a lot of like Disney vlogs and she will go on like sleepovers to different um, Disney resorts. And I have never been to Disney. I have always wanted to go to Disney. I've never been to Disney. Um, Bobby and I have talked about it a couple times, like taking a trip one of these days. But, uh, like, sincerely, I've grown up on Disney. She's just so much fun to watch. And she also just does, like, real-life vlogs, too. I love vlogs. And so she's another one that I love to watch. I also watch Antonio. Antonio is Saad's brother. And I love watching Antonio Des and his girlfriend Maddie as well. Who else do I watch? Um, I listen to, oh, Steph Pappas. I'll listen to her reviews, like, while I'm getting ready or something like that. Um, Mariah and Bill, I watch here and there, especially now they just got married, so I'm like super excited to see what they upload. Um, let's see. And Sierra Schultz, I watch here and then. Like Ryan Trahan, shut up. Every time Ryan uploads, I get so excited. I get so excited because he is just like the most genius of geniuses when it comes to creating content. His editing is top notch. Everything about Ryan Trahan is absolutely like, I, I'm, I'm obsessed. I really am obsessed. And when I get fixated on a creator, I fixate. So I'm very excited. And Bobby and I are doing something super fun two weeks from today. And I'm so excited. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna vlog, but um, yeah, I, I she's flying home from Denver to come. So anyways, um, and then we're gonna have like a weekend after that. So I'm just very excited. Life is so exciting and I love my friends so much. What is your favorite Swiftmas gift that you got from Taylor? I think my favorite will forever be the bracelet like the fact that she got a bracelet made and it actually in the inside says friendship bracelet and it's in rose gold <sighs> and the fact that she walked in to somewhere and said please put taylor loves rachel on this like it's something like that i'll never be able to wrap my head around and then she wrote on the tag rachel so you never forget like that's insane like that is that's purely insane um, what is a piece of merch that you wish they would bring back because you never got? The Stella McCartney Benjamin Button hoodie. My solid answer, my final answer, that's what I'm buzzing in on that one. I want that hoodie so bad. Like, I scan and scan and scan for that thing online. I do. I do, in fact. Um, because I am obsessed with that hoodie. I think it's so cute. Like, I have, I've just always wanted it. I don't know why I just didn't order it back in the Lover era. Another, like, merch drop that I wish would come back is the man merch. She had a cap come out that said, I think it said, like, Fearless Leader Alpha Type, and then it said TS on it. I would love to have that, too. I am such a fan of the man, and I'm also such a fan of um, baseball caps. So I would love to have, Ooh, quickly rank the tours. Ooh. Okay. So I did not go to the fearless tour. This is really difficult. I want to put reputation first. I really do want to put reputation first because 
that was for the fans that were just sticking around. That was, you know, 2016 happened and then we got Taylor back and she went on tour and it was just so warm to experience that with fans who stayed. I'm gonna put rep, then I'm gonna put eras, then I'm gonna put 1989 because that's the tour I met her. Um, speak now, red, fearless. I think that's how I'm gonna do it. But I love every single tour. Like I'm doubting myself literally as we speak. Would you ever consider making Jasmine her own YouTube channel? Jasmine's my cat and I would have no idea what to post. So that's gonna be a no. Um, but I think, I think that's cute. I love, I love sincerely like on, on TikTok and things like that, like seeing different little animals and things like that when they have their own account. I'm just like, I personally don't have any creative thoughts for my cat. Um, when did you become like a diehard Swifty? So I heard Love Story, I was instantly obsessed. And then I started to discover Taylor's music and I would sit when I had computer time, my mom would let me have a little computer time after I got home from school and I would play Webkins or I would um, go on YouTube and look up Taylor's interviews and look at her different performances. I remember seeing this performance of her doing teardrops on my guitar with a girl named Julian Irwin. She was on, I think America's Got Talent. I remember that so clearly because I was so entranced by that performance. And uh, I grew up loving to sing. I would do talent shows and things like that. So that's actually why my mom bought me my first Taylor CD. My very first Taylor CD was Fearless. And my mom bought that CD for me so I could practice singing Love Story over and over again for the talent show. So, um, but, I really just fell in love with Taylor's music very fast. And then, of course, I wanted to learn about her debut album. And so I started like asking everybody in elementary school, hey, do you listen to Taylor Swift? Do you listen to Taylor Swift? And she was very popular. Like everybody knew our song. Everybody knew like Picture to Burn. And so I started to investigate and uh, they became also my favorite songs. And um, I can remember like, taking my mom's cassette and I, her big like CD cassette player and I would drag it into the bathroom, put it on the countertop, plug it in and I would not get out of the bath until the debut album was complete. <laughs> and so I think that that was when I definitely started to become a diehard fan when I started to absolutely like invest myself like i was like okay i need to know everything about this artist because she is clearly just amazing that is definitely when and then i can remember feeling so understood by taylor's debut album like i'm going to cry when taylor swift taylor's version comes out no doubt about it because that was the album where i listened to and i was like oh my god this girl gets me like i feel like that was like I always say Love Story was like the song that like made me a Swifty, but really the debut album in whole like pushed me. Oh, this girl gets you. Like this is big sister energy right here. And she's felt like that ever since to me through her music and through her. Like I just, like even a little bit ago, I was listening to part of her speech when she got her honorary doctorate at NYU. And I'm just thinking, my god she's such a big sister like her words are so impactful her words are so like meaningful and rich and they make me feel understood so that's definitely something i gravitated towards because i had friendships but they didn't feel authentic in the way that i wanted them to in the regards of I didn't feel like they wanted to be my friends as much as I wanted to be their friends. So that was hard for me to understand. So the outside was really one of those songs that like, uh, um, <laughs> that made the biggest impact on my heart and still do. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much how I became a diehard Swifty and then I never stopped. <laughs> oh my God. So. 
Anyways, you guys, I feel like that's a really good question to wrap this up on. Thank you guys so, so much for sending in questions. I definitely want to do more Q and A's because it's so fun just to like talk to you guys. So yeah, you guys, I love you guys so much. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this video entertained you in some way and I sincerely hope I see you. Yes, yeah, you in the next one. Bye guys.